What is rolling everybody? You are watching a brand new video here on the Car Boot Collectors YouTube channel. Today, we're coming at you with another haul of action figures, toys and collectibles, courtesy of the man, the myth, the legend, who is Booty Steve. Big Booty Steve, yet again, twerking his way on into my direct messages to say he had another collection of bits and pieces he wanted to move on. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Another load of stuff from the legend Booty Steve. Um, Booty Steve, if you're new to the channel, is a guy I know from the car, Boot Cell. And he's probably watching this right now, so hello to Booty Steve if you're out there watching. Uh, yeah, guy I know from the car, Boot Cell. Pretty big collector of uh, toys, collectibles, action figures. And every now and then he'll send me a message and say, you know, I've got another load of stuff I want to move. If you're interested, and the answer from me is usually yes. He knows exactly the kind of stuff I'm after. He's always got some really cool stuff. And uh, we, all, we always uh, end up making a deal. So here we go. We've got a whole carload of collectibles. Not going to lie, my car is quite small. But, you know, when you start putting big Millennium Falcons in it, it soon fills up. So anyway, we're going to do it a different style this way. As you, you know, normally I have the tripod set up and um, do it that way. I figured this way it might make, you know, it might help the flow a little bit. It might go on a little bit, um, a little bit quicker. Um, and also it's going to be easy to show the bigger items. Because, you know, as I mentioned already, there's a lot of big pieces. There's some, like, store display items. Uh, so I figured it'd be easy to do the video this way. So let's get on with it. So we're going to start with the stuff outside. We'll come back to this stuff in a minute. As you, as you can see, there's some cool stuff in this haul. Uh, really nice stack of um, big box X rental VHS tapes. We've got some modern Star Wars stuff. And as we come down here, carefully try not to show you my storage because it is an absolute shit heap at the moment. I've got so much stuff that I've bought recently. Uh, we've got some of the... It's like that bit where the Ewoks are playing them like drums. Um, Star Wars role play, cosplay type helmets. So we've got those. We've got some plushes right here. Uh, we've got a box of some modern carded Star Wars. So a couple, couple, couple of Lucy's. You know, we've got some Lucy's right. A couple of Transformers. A couple of vintage Star Wars pieces. We've got a whole pile of Star Wars vehicles. The Falcon and the Troop Transport. Some of this stuff is vintage. Some of it's a bit newer. Uh, and then we've got some really cool store display pieces. So we've got some uh, pieces from The Force Awakens. And then my absolute favourite thing in this haul is this bad boy right here. This Alien Resurrection. Um, I believe from a blockbuster like VHS uh, advertising poster sign, whatever. So uh, yeah, let's get on into it and show you what we've got. So I'm going to start off with... Uh, let's really start off with the vehicle. So um, right here we have got the... Typical. It's been raining as well, so the floor's a little bit muddy. Um, we've got the Millennium Falcon. This is the Power of the Force 2 one from the 1990s. I think about 1996, 97. Uh, complete and in really nice condition. It's basically exactly the same as the Vintage Falcon, except it's got um, different paint applications. And the, you know, bits inside are a little bit different. But yeah, it's basically the Vintage Falcon, but modernized slightly as i said it's from the mid 90s really nice condition power of the four stuff obviously is not the most collectible it's quite overproduced there's a lot of it about um, but people do still buy it you know there are collectors for it and people do buy them just as toys so there's the falcon then we've got the og vintage snow speeder now the guns on this bad boy you can see are a little bit askew i don't know how to clip them in but then it's not broken or anything, they just need to be clipped in. Uh, it's missing the harpoon gun as they generally are. That's just a little piece that clips on the back. Um, but it has got the canopy in there, which is quite nice. So it feels quite heavy. I don't know if there's batteries in here. I say it's got the harpoon gun. But there should be like a little block that clips on the back with some string. I'm not sure if there's any batteries in there. It feels quite heavy. There you go. There's the um, snow speeder. I've uh, got this right here. Now, I don't actually know why it's got this sort of red design on it but it's a tie interceptor and it's got sort of a sift type pattern there as well a booty stevie he said he wasn't actually sure himself what this uh, sort of decoration is for he couldn't find one anywhere but he said he's had it for quite a while he said it was from like power of the force from the 90s i don't know if that's correct but if it is it's probably like an expanded universe type thing i'm not too sure there's no electronics in it so I don't know, and I couldn't see a date on it. It might be newer, I'm not. I'm really not sure on that one. And then we've got a Power of the Force 2 X-Wing. Minus the guns, but it has a canopy. 
So there you go. Again, it's basically the vintage X-Wing, just sort of updated graphics released in the 90s, as they did quite a bit with the um, vehicles in the 90s. Uh, this thing right here, now this is the bloody bane of anybody's existence, because they aren't that sought after, and they take up a lot of room, and I always seem to find these, everyone seems to find these quite often, they're always about, and they say they're not that, not that desirable. Um, this is the Rebel Troop Transport, and I was saying that this one is in really nice condition, this one's probably, you know, if you wanted one, this is probably about as good as you're going to get really for a loose one. Stickers are really good, it isn't faded, it has got the trays inside, if I can sure how to do it with one hand but um there are like trays inside it see it's basically like a sort of figure uh, carry case so there it is the rebel troop transport and then we go to the other end let's get it in there it has got the gun in there as well but you, you know you can see the stickers on that are really good that's in pretty good nick as far as they go generally when i find those at the car boot unless they come as a bundle or there's figures in them i generally leave those behind as i said they're hard to move uh the last one of these i had I ended up parting out and selling all the bits inside it and um, the shell went to my good friend Alex who again is probably watching and I think he used it for some kind of Warhammer conversion. So uh, yeah, Rebel Troop Transport. And then we have got a B-Wing. Notoriously, these have quite a fragile mechanism. I haven't actually tested it. Again, it's probably quite a hard thing to do with one hand, but the... Oh, he's got a rubber band on it as well, so uh, the wings are supposed to pop out. That's complete, and it looks in pretty good nick. So yeah, B-Wing, that's quite a nice item. Uh, we come to the box here. So we've got a couple of Transformers. I don't know anything about Transformers. These are newer ones from, I mean, I'm going to guess mid-2000s, late-2000s. So that looks like one of the jet planes. It doesn't really take an expert to point that out, but yeah, looks like a jet plane. No idea on those. I, I don't know very much about Transformers. Uh, we've got a B-Wing pilot, which is quite nice because I can put that with the B-Wing. And we've got Luke in his X-Wing gear, both vintage figures. That one looks in really nice condition. To be fair, that one does too. Um, Luke's, Luke's a fairly, um, fairly sought after figure. It's not particularly rare, but it is one that people do want. And there is... There's the little hatch for the Millennium Falcon. I think the landing struts are missing for it, but it's you know not the end of the world. They're not too expensive to get hold of. And then we've got an OG Torn Torn. Uh, he's a little worse for wear. He's got some melting to the plastic and he's discolored, but he is the open belly variant. So you can, in theory, Oh, again, not going to be able to do it with one hand, but you can stuff a figure inside there. Pretty cool. There's also the solid belly variant, which is pretty much the same, but doesn't have this rubber bit. It's just solid. Torn, torn. Uh, so we've got this right here, actually. Uh, we have got Boba Fett's blaster. Uh, now, this is quite a funny one. I was talking to Booty Steve about this. You know, I find these all the time, or at least I did before the boot sales were, were cancelled. And um, these used to sell quite quite consistently, you know, like 20, 25 quid. Um, but I had one of these just before Christmas and it took forever to sell. It just was listed for months and months and it took forever to go. And then I bought a couple of these earlier in the year off of Booty Steve, funnily enough. And the prices on these have really skyrocketed because of the Mandalorian. These bad boys are going for quite a bit now. The last one of these I sold went for I think £65 which as I say considering before Christmas I really struggled to get like 25 for one of them it's pretty mental really pretty insane but yeah as a working condition lights and sounds Boba Fett blaster should be a pr pretty quick sale you know sort of 60 75 pound if I can get it listed quickly so that's that box um, let's go to this one here so we've got the Darth Maul lightsaber the sort of the double ender um, this one, I think, is from the Saga collection, sort of late 2000s. I want to guess 2009, 2010. I can't see a date on it. Um, brand new and sealed. That's quite nice. I remember when I when I was uh, when I was a child, the bloody Darth Maul lightsaber was incredibly expensive because for the longest time, the only one you could get was the uh, the Episode One one. They didn't release them 
for ages after that. So the episode one one was really hard to find. They used to be incredibly expensive, incredibly hard to find, but now they're quite readily available because they still they make them again, but Darth Maul lightsaber. Uh, so we've got a couple of Sonic plushes. We have got Knuckles from Sonic X. This is probably one out of a claw machine made by Gosh. I've never heard of them. And then this is a big old, I don't know, probably probably about a 25 incher uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. He's very bully. And then we've got a Pokemon here. It's got a very, a very floppy neck. I don't have a clue who this is. Um, but it's got the original, the OG original tag on it from the Pokemon Center, nonetheless, uh, in Japan. I, I don't know who this character is, um, but Pokemon Center stuff generally is quite popular. Pokemon's pretty a pretty hot subject right now, so that'll probably be quite a quick sale. Uh, and then this right here, uh, this is quite nice. It's a bit of a shame because it's not in very good condition, but this is an Ecto-1 made by the famous Ertl. Ertl toys. Um, and it's a bit of a shame because it's it's not in bad condition, it's just missing quite a lot. Uh, if this is complete in the box, I think these run about 80 to 100 quid, but like this. To be completely honest, someone will, it'll probably be a very, very quick sale. Someone will buy it and, and you know, fix it up. Uh, I'm going to say it, it'd be a very quick sale, probably about 30 quid, 40 quid, maybe a push, maybe a little more. Uh, but there is the Ecto one that's pretty nifty. So we've got the free um, uh, aforementioned helmets these are like the voice changes I, I remember these voice changing helmets it was like a real fad i don't know if they still make them but for a period of time they made these things for everything you know doctor who star wars transformers i don't remember them being very popular but everyone seemed to have at least one of them so we've got the attack of the clones era clone trooper I don't know if it's from Attack of the Clones or if it's like slightly later. We've got one here that looks like it's from the Clone Wars with the sight on it. Uh, that's probably a specific character because of the blue pattern. I don't, I don't know though. I don't know any of their names. And then this one right here, very much like our pal, the Boba Fett Blaster. This, this is a, this is a hot item right now because of the Mandalorian. We've got the, um, the Boba Fett voice changer helmet. Um, these are pretty sought after at the moment. These are going complete for about 100, 125 pound, which is quite nice. Um, if you see them about, you know, something to look for is this right here. This really is where a lot of the value lies. Uh, without it, like like that, you know, they're about 40 quid and they sell well enough for that. But this right here, this is uh, this is this is your ticket to uh, Dollar City. You know, this is this is a hard piece to find. You can see it just clicks on and off really easily. And very often they are lost. There are people on eBay at the moment selling 3D printed ones of these. That's sort of how in demand it is. But with, I don't want to break it, but you know, it's quite a rare item to get with the uh, the antenna. So quite happy it came with that. So uh, yeah, we'll go over to these bits and then we'll we'll continue with the other uh, smalls, which you saw at the start, which are on the, the table or at workbench, if you will. It's got these right here. Um, Booty Steve was really excited about these, and I've got to be honest, I always find these are a pain, like to, to deal with the sort of point of sale displays. They're a bit of a hard thing to send, and generally, when I've had them in the past, they do not sell very quickly. But these are from The Force Awakens, so we've got these two, I guess they're like aisle ends. They look like they clip onto a sort of bracket and of a shelf, but they're two first order Stormtrooper um, cardboard cutouts they're quite big you know they're about three and a half foot tall uh, but there they are first order stormtroopers i'll probably save those for when the conventions are back on to be honest because i don't really want to send them uh, same with this right here this is a force awakened hand solo looks like a banner it's got magnetic strips on the back so it probably would have gone on the top of a dvd unit i would guess this right over here Oh, this is my favourite thing in the entire lot. This is a, a great item. This ticks all the boxes for an item that I'm going to be purchasing, you know, regardless of the price. This is just a great item that is exactly the type of stuff I love to buy. So this is an Alien Resurrection. Back up in your ass with the Resurrection. Um, In-store display. I'd imagine from a video shop. If you saw my last video, 
and Booty Steve said he used to work in a video shop, so I, he had some like point of sale type pieces. So I'd imagine this came from that same video shop, but it's the sort of thing, you know, it wouldn't have been out of place in like a blockbuster back in the day, advertising the VHS for Alien Resurrection. The ultimate terror is back. And it's basically like a sort of plastic poster. Now, not that this is the most interesting angle, but you can see it's just sort of like a bit of vacuum form plastic with the alien like popping out. Big old thing, you know, this is about three foot tall by maybe two and a half foot width. A big old, uh, big old thing. And that's really, really is quite a cool thing. Um, I haven't really been able to find any that of, you know, it's pretty hard to find even a picture of one of these. It's not really something they would have made a lot of and it's not something people would have had access to purchase back in the day um, so it's quite a rare item but i did manage to find one that was listed on ebay about four or five years ago and they were asking one thousand us dollars um which to be completely honest i don't know how much this thing is worth i don't think it's worth quite that much it's probably worth a good couple hundred quid or so um it's likely an item which i will probably hang on to i don't really want to sell it. it is cool if i do list it i'll probably list it quite high and hope somebody doesn't buy it that's that's my plan for that i reckon so yeah alien resurrection that's bloody cool big fan of that uh, and then we have got a little box of um star wars carded figures so i forgot about these so i'll just show these quite quickly um some of these are really nice figures some of them are sort of peg warmer type ones which i will probably bundle up uh, but you know always grab them because People do buy them pretty well, pretty consistently. So we've got this dude right here from the best film, Phantom Menace, Team Toe Pagalis, a pod racer. That's from the Saga collection, which is like the era of Star Wars figures that I collected back in the day. Those are pretty cool. And we've got this dude right here, Orn Free Ta. Um, again, these ones I remember back in the day, my local entertainer, these were like... The definition of a peg warm you know these were on the shelf like years and years after they came out loads of them um this is a really cool one we have got the general grievous this is a galactic hunt uh this in fact might actually be the saga collection i don't know they're all they're all basically called the saga or the trilogy collection i think this might be the trilogy collection i don't I, I know saga collection those are I'm sure these are called the Saga Collection. I don't know. It's irrelevant. Bloody things. Um, this one, Saga Collection, this is really cool. You know, it's not a particularly expensive figure. It's very cool. It's very... It is... Shit in hell. Bloody bastard thing. Let's pick it up. I'm worried about breaking it. It's quite fragile. Apologies for my for my language there. It was uh, abrupt. Um, General Grievous on fire, though. Very cool figure. Do, do like that one. I think that's that's about a 25, 30 pound piece. Uh, we've got this one here, yet another one which is very um, familiar in my mind because back in the day, this was another one that used to have dozens of on the shelves of Entertainer. Dijaz Per, Alien Bounty Hunter. Um, then we've got a couple of Revenge of the Sith figures. These are pretty cool. I don't think I ever had too many of these back in the day. I think I had a few of them. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it because I'm worried it's gonna break. It'll be alright, it's not broken, it's fine. I'm just gonna leave it. It's a little bit windy today, it's not too bad. It's actually it's actually very nice weather today. Um I say I don't think I had too many of the Revenge of the Sith figures. I definitely had the main characters. They used to do box sets at Woolworth, so I had the box sets more than the sort of single carded figures. But here's General Grievous, pretty cool. That's one someone will want. Uh, then we've got Bail Organa. Oh no. Captain Antilles. I'm sure I've had this one before and it was Bail Organa, and that's basically the same thing, I don't know. And uh, then we've got three here from the Shadows of the Empire, Power of the Force set. These are all, all on the Troy logo, bilingual cards. So we've got Dash Rendar, pretty cool. We've got Prince Izor or Zizor, I can't remember his, the exact pronunciation. And then we've got Luke Skywalker and his sort of, I don't know, armor. I think these were based on a comic or a book or something. No, these are based on the game, aren't they? Shadows of the Empire on the N64. So yeah, Luke in some kind of armor. But yeah, there you go. Some nice, some nice, uh, nice figures there. Some good, 
um, some actually some not really nice figures and then some as I say good ones which I will bundle up which which is fine because um, you know if you're starting out collecting it's these like little the inexpensive background characters which which you know they they build up your collection those three as a as a trio I'll probably ask you know 20 quid 25 quid and it's a good deal for someone that's starting out collecting them so I'm gonna stand up and stretch my back my back has been curled over while I've just shown all that stuff and we're gonna show you the the other stuff up here on the table I'm trying to not show you what's over here to the camera to the right because it is an absolute tip in here at the moment i've bought a lot of stuff recently um and it's, it's a little bit embarrassing to be completely honest there's a lot of empty boxes kicking around where stuff has arrived there's a lot of massive spaceships i've bought from booty steve so uh, yeah let's get into this stuff and show up fairly quickly that's not that's, that's fine it's not going to fall over and uh yeah then i'm going to pick that thing up and get all the stuff cleaned up and listed if you see anything in this video you're interested in purchasing um probably this video will probably be going up i want to say sunday evening so pretty much everything you're seeing here will probably be listed up on my ebay shop within the next week so if you see something you like it'll probably be up on there if it hasn't already sold or if i end up not doing that and then it'll go up at some other point i don't know so anyway we've got one here this is the Jewback with the sand trooper from the power of the force range now he said this had been opened and resealed which it sounds like it has but it, it looks like it's been it, that looks like fact a factory seal to me oh no maybe not uh but yeah he said that's been open but it's in like minty condition inside so no, it's fair enough I, I will open it just to make sure and then we've got two black series figures here these are pretty cool so if you're not too up on your star wars um for you know for the longest time with star wars figures they only made three and three quarter inches uh scale and then I, I want to say it was about 2011 they started making these six inch ones you know more in line with like marvel legends and that kind of thing and uh, they're really popular they've made absolutely hundreds and thousands of them now they're very popular very popular collectible toys so here is lando calarizian in his bespin get up really nice condition on these you know booty steve has done a good job keeping them in good nick uh, same with this one this is quite an uncommon piece this is the imperial probe droid from empire strikes back i'd never seen this before i'd never even never even knew they did a black series one of that character but there he is pretty cool stuff and then we've got these two right here these i think are force link yeah force link compatible ones these came out i think around the force awakens um so two sets here boba fett and han solo uh, people are asking quite a quite a chunky for this set. people are asking sort of 50 60 pounds i don't know why they're actually you know they're selling it around sort of 20 25 but it seems to be a hard set to find and there aren't many listed so i might just hang on to those that might be a set which will appreciate in value over time when there's not so many available uh, so this right here this is i believe called a body knocker made by made by necker i think it's sort of solar powered and it bobbles around so he is doesn't seem to be working i think it's solar powered so it hasn't really been in the sun i, I don't know how it works but there's that um this set right here is pretty cool another star wars black series piece this is for the 40th anniversary they did like black series figures in the vintage style card back packaging and this is like a big old set they did where you just all you get is the Darth Vader figure but you get this sort of display base for them so they did reissues in black series formats of all of the 12 back figures as you can see there and uh, that's a pretty cool set you know it's not particularly valuable but it seems to be quite hard to find they're going for around 50 quid which is not too bad again it's the sort of thing which you know give it a few months give it a few years it might might appreciate in value a little bit uh, then we've got this right here this is a monopoly usaopoly um star wars it is used but it looks like it's in pretty good nick i haven't checked it i'll assume it's complete but i'm a bit annoyed with monopolies at the moment because i'm really swimming in them i've got about i had a collection of about 30 monopolies that i listed up on ebay last weekend or the weekend before so i've got plenty of monopolies in at the moment but no no star wars probably will sell quite quickly so this right here is quite cool this is an og palatoid board game escape from the death star i've never actually had any of these before they did quite a few board games back in the day this is about yeah 1977 some of the earlier merchandise 
and uh, yeah, I haven't checked it, but it looks like it's pretty much complete. They're not too, not too sought after anyway. I think they're about twenty pounds, something like that. They did a reissue of that, and I think it's pretty cool. They did a reissue of that with uh, the Vin, the Retro Collection Grand Moff Tarkin, and I think that's a pretty cool, cool piece. But that's the OG one. Uh, then we've got this right here. We haven't got too much left now. We've got the VHS tapes in this book, and then that's going to be it for this video. So we've got this book right here. This is. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, is it Geiger's Alien or Giga's Alien? I'm not too sure, but it's a paperback book, film design, 20th Century Fox. It's a paperback book, you know, about the same size as a, as a record, and it is The Art of Alien. And this is quite a sought-after piece. This, um, this book runs, you know, it's about £40, £50. Pound. It's quite cool. Some pretty, uh, pretty cool sort of, you know, production pictures, artwork pretty cool stuff if you're a fan of alien which you know i am but but not enough to own a book about the making of it to be honest so uh, yeah that's all that stuff that's all like the collectability pieces now the last few pieces we have got to show i don't know why i'm talking i don't know why, don't know why i'm saying we because it's only, only me here but um the last uh, pieces i've got to show are these vhs tapes so these are all um bar one of them these are all like x rental big box ones booty steve said that he had accumulated these at his time working at the video shop and i think a couple of them he said he's picked up here and there you know sort of car boot sales and stuff but he said he's got quite a few more um and next time i buy some stuff off him he'll bring some more uh, more big box videos along so we've got this one right here this one is pretty nifty this is from the nightmare on elm street tv series freddy's nightmares just a you know sort of retail release probably not too sought after but you know it was basically sort of chucked in and then these are all of the big box x rental ones so again if you know if you're not too clear up on your videos it's, this is a good thing to look out for is the big box ones so these are the ones that were generally issued for uh, for retail but not for retail for um for rental so these are the ones that you would have got if you went into say blockbuster these are generally how like retail videos came in the sort of smaller smaller boxes so I'm not too familiar with most of these films, I'll be completely honest. So we've got Fletch Lives with Chevy Chase. Um, and these are actually in really nice condition. The videos I picked up last time had a little bit of mould on them. Um, but these ones all appear to be in pretty good condition. I'm not going to crack open all of them, but there's GoldenEye. Uh, these two are arguably the more sought after of the ones in the pile here. We have got the uh, CBS Fox releases of Pr uh, Predator and big trouble in little china both of these in the condition they're in which is which is really good these should be around 50 pounds each um i'm, I'm gonna be honest I'm, they'll probably go for a little bit more i wouldn't be surprised if these are closer to sort of 75 pound again maybe a little more than that even um in the embossed cbs fox cases uh just you know the condition on these is really good and that really does mean a lot when it comes to video collectors so you can see like the condition of that case is is, is really good so there's predator and there's big trouble in little china those are in really really nice condition then we've got another chevy chase flick here we've got fletch another film i've never heard of Disclosure with Michael Douglas. Again, I have absolutely no idea what that film is. Four Weddings and a Funeral with Hugh Grant. I, I, I recognise the name of the film. I can't say I have ever seen it. Uh, Mark Harmon in Summer School. This looks like a... Um, based on the cover, maybe this is one of those cool old films where there's like a, a dog. You know, a bit like when there was a fad of like animals in films like... Uh, Dunstan checks in if anyone remembers that classic 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 film with a monkey in a hotel Maybe it's a chimpanzee. I can't really remember young guns Two, blaze of glory Again, I'm not too familiar with any of these films not gonna lie and then the final one we've got here Steve Martin is a gangster Rick Moranis is an FBI agent and they star together in my blue heaven what? Uh, so yeah, no idea on that one. But there you go, a really nice stack of um, big box videos. Um, you know, video is one of those things where 
pretty much any videos you're going to find at the car boot sales or the charity shops are going to be worth absolutely nothing but there is definitely a collector's market for them if you get the right ones they can be pretty damn sought after so something you know it's worth like doing a bit of research on um i think they're quite interesting i'm always interested in buying them you know big box x rental videos pretty cool stuff so uh, there you go that's uh, today's haul i'm going to try and round this up quite quickly because it's on 30 minutes so uh thank you for watching this one if you enjoyed it we, we'll have more coming soon so uh stay tuned click that subscribe button if you want to see more and we'll see you soon goodbye